On behalf of the Foundation Visited Holders the Dalai Lama, I would like to welcome you for the public talk of His Holiness. We are very pleased to receive today such a great number of you, both in this hall as well as in the auditorium where this whole performance can be looked at in, uh, on screens. Before we receive His Holiness, I would like to give you some practical aspects. At the entrance, you have received an A4 leaflet on which you can find the layout of the hall. And on the back side, you will find instructions for the use of the headset and how to adjust it to your language of preference. Furthermore, I would like to ask you to switch off your mobile phone completely and to refrain from any use of electronic equipment. May I ask you to remain seated at the end of the lecture for a few more announcements when his holiness leaves. He will then give a short visit to the auditorium as well. We are pleased to offer you a special service Within one hour after the lectures, you can obtain a copy of it on CD or DVD in the stand of auditorium networks in the main hall. May I wish you an inspiring day. We will now wait for the arrival of His Holiness, who will be welcomed by Paula de Weiss, the chair lady of the foundation, as well as Erika Terfta. Thank you very much and have a very nice afternoon. I would like to express a heartfelt welcome to Your Holiness for being with, with us here today and bid welcome to our honored guests and to all of those who have come to the Rai this afternoon. We feel greatly honored that His Holiness has been able to come today and although it perhaps should not be surprising, we were very astonished and uh, delighted by the great interest of all of you to come to His Holiness's talk today. And perhaps it's the attraction of opposites, since the Netherlands is the lowest country in the world, and Tibet the highest, the roof of the world, and perhaps it's 
it has to, this great attraction has to do with His Holiness's much-deserved reputation for kindness and honesty and integrity, qualities that sometimes seem very hard to find in this world of ours and for which we seem to have a very strong need. And respect for these qualities is not a new thing. For centuries, Amsterdam has had a motto, and you see it symbolized by three X's all over the city, three X's. And the translation of this motto is determination, perseverance, and compassion. So I feel that it's appropriate now in this city at this time to be here with two people who personify these characteristics of determination, perseverance, and compassion. So it is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce to you the first of these two, Erika Terpstra. Although for Dutch people she needs no introduction, and also for Tibetans she needs no introduction, because she's long been an ally, a staunch ally to them, and a supporter. Erika Terpstra is a former member of parliament and was a minister in the Dutch government. And she's long been a good friend to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And I'm pleased to welcome here, her here today. Erika. Tashi Dilek, Your Holiness, the Dalai Lama, the ocean of wisdom, and it is so true. Like so many, we encounter your tolerance and your compassion for all sentient beings, even towards your enemies. And I feel it is a personal benediction, a spiritual experience, that touches my innermost. We all gathered here and far beyond have been eagerly looking forward to this meeting. And of course, it is very special to be face to face with a Nobel Prize winner of peace and of so many international global awards. And we salute you for that. But basically, we are here because you are you, our, my, spiritual leader. I know, I know you don't like flattery, and of course I know that you think of yourself as a simple Buddhist monk. And perhaps I should not be telling you this, Your Holiness, but we happen to be a Buddhist monk. We are willing to open our minds and our hearts to you. We are willing to learn your lessons of compassion for everyone without exception. So today, we are full of comp compassion, in particular for those who have denied themselves the privilege of meeting you and becoming inspired for you. Your Holiness, we are so happy you are here in the Netherlands again. I had the privilege of being one of your hosts as Member of Parliament 10 years ago, and I'm proud that our Parliament will meet you officially tomorrow. And now, and now for today, this meeting is so meaningful. You personally gave so much to us all. And I have searched high and low 
to find something, a way of giving you something personal too in return. And I found a poem inspired by your beloved Tibetan culture, written by one of my favorite poets, Henk van Zuiden. I want to dedicate this poem to you. It is specially translated in English for this event. But before I read this poem in English, I want to read it first in Dutch, if you allow me. It heet... Pardon. Zo heet het niet. Het heet Brug tussen mooie bedoelingen. Het koord dat mij naar veilig moet dragen, haakt naar overzijde. Een brug tussen, tussen mooie bedoelingen. Zal ik, daar eenmaal aangekomen, het lawaai van de wereld een beetje kunnen dempen? Volk dat vrijheid verwoesten, verlegen maken? Hun handen bevrachten met streelten en pioenen? Dan ook durf ik vragen toe, Bewaak vonken uit het nirwana. Hang leven niet aan een zijde draad. Rijk voorbeeld aan dochters en zonen. En laat ze in vrede wonen. En nou in Engels. Bridge between fine intentions. The court that is to bear me to a safe haven yearns for the far side. A bridge between fine intentions. Will I, once arrived there, be able to subdue to some small degree the noisy tumult of the world? Make people who have destroyed, destroyed freedom feel embarrassed? Weigh down their hands with peonies and caresses? Then will I only watch over the sparks emitted from Nirvana. Do not hang life on any silken thread. Set an example to your sons and daughters and let them live in utter peace. Thank you, Your Highness. Rabbi, old friend, how are you? I think since 33, isn't it? I think my, my first, first visit here, yeah, I, I think, think we met. Hmm? Hmm? So, so at that, that time, time, you see my, my uh, sort of unforgettable, unforgettable sort, of ex ex sort of experience, experience. looking Look face, face to face, face. then I, I reflect the Jewish, Jewish people, people during what's the day and the Holocaust suffering I something very very deep feeling so since then <laughs> we become very close friends so from time to time we met at our last meeting in Ambrasa <laughs> So, now old person, 
Not easy. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I'm extremely happy having this opportunity uh, sit together in a hall so we can, I think, beside word, I think we can some sort of contact in said, vibration, I think. So I'm very happy. Uh, So I very much appreciate uh, the organizer. The organizer, that old lady also I know since many years. So in Holland, there are quite a number of old friends. So anyway, this visit, something like reunion. So I'm very happy. And also, I very much appreciate uh, another lady who introduced me. I very much appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, my talk. Did she do that? The power of compassion in turbulent times. Hmm? <laughs> so sometimes. I mean, I must confess, you see, on the program, certain things mentioned, but the real substance is always the same for me. <laughs> so, uh, so, Kazada, oh, power of compassion in turbulent times. Uh, so is my talk, essentially, uh, what is the best way to achieve happy life? And particularly when we're passing through difficult period. I think you, this moment, due to global economy crisis, yes. I think a lot of impact on individual people and family. So now, uh, whenever I give talk with a large number of people, I always make clear. Firstly, please uh, don't think too much, I say, with too much expectation. Because I have nothing to offer. Uh, so you will get disappointment. Then also, some people have the feeling that Dalai Lama have some kind of miracle power. So that's really uh, nonsense. But then, even some people have the belief, oh, one few occasion, one occasion in Italy, one lady, uh, after my talk, one lady approached to me, when she come to listen my talk, his body some pain. But after, after that talk, is that pain gone? So that seems I have some special power. <laughs> Accidental. 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 I think. Uh, so, yeah. so some people, you see, believe I have some kind of uh, healing power. That I often is telling people. If I have 
really healing power. And naturally, I have to use uh, for my, myself. So last year, I went through surgery to remove gallbladder. So that proof I have no healing power. <laughs> so I am, as I always describe myself, as a simple Buddhist monk. That's all. Uh, then here I am talking or I am interacting with you, even not that level. Buddhist monk, not that, not that level. Not on that level. On, on, not on, not that, on level. that level, but still deeper. The first level, more fundamental, we, more fundamental more level. level. We all human being, same human being. Mentally, same. Emotionally, also same. I think same time, same time. Then physically, also, basically, same. So on that level, no barrier. Other religious faith, or races, or color, uh, nationality, language, culture, these are secondary. On that level, a lot of differences. So I am talking or communicate with you on the fundamental level as a human being. What I found the best way to keep peace of mind, you can also, you see, utilize that because we are same human being. We all have same potential. Only thing is whether person pay attention or realize and utilize or pay more attention and some nurturing. So that's that makes differences. Otherwise, we all same. Simple reason is I think more than ten thousand people here. Maybe 10, 000, 10, more than 10,000 people here. Now, for example, 10,000 people uh, come from our mother, nearly 10,000 mother. Some cases, is it two, two children or three children? But, uh, but basically, we all come from mother. Anyone who come from sky? <laughs> no, or from flower. Or sometimes, you see, you know, uh, in, in the form of praising uh, in India, uh, some sort of stories, some great Indian master come from lotus. So sometimes I jokingly say, telling people, oh, those great master who come from lotus, perhaps they may have more compassion towards the lotus rather than the human being. <laughs> or fortunate or fortunate or unfortunate, we come from our mother. So we everyone equipped the potential of compassion. Because we are self nurtured and survived by our mother's affection. And mother's milk. My own case, my mother, illiterate, just uh, I mean uneducated, just one villager, uh, religious mother, just an ordinary farmer's um, lady, but very very kind. So at that time, to some extent. My mother spoiled me. Reason. Usually, is my mother carry me on her shoulder. And then, 
I sometimes I act more aggressively. You see, holding mother's ear, and then I want to go this side, I go this side, and go this side. And if uh, mother not listen, <laughs> so that young boy, I think a little bit spoiled by my mother's kindness. So, so the, I think we, uh, uh, I think mother's children, we, I think never saw angry face of our mother. Very, very kind. So that, that is the real teacher for me about value of affection or compassion. I think the amount of compassion or affection which I receive from my mother, I think that experience deeply Deeply absorbed, deeply ab absorbed. absorbed in my blood. So I'm quite sure. Sure. Uh, so over ten thousand people. I think those those people, those individuals who receive in early age maximum affection from mother, I think they are deep inside their mind, much more stable than those individuals who somehow lacking that affection and deep inside some feeling of insecurity and as a result such person seeing other people a little distance. So they are both Basically, we all come from our mother. So we all have same potential of compassion. My own case, the seed of my compassion come from my mother, not from um, Buddhist teaching, Buddhist training. Later, of course, through Buddhist training, did that seed more nurtured and more further strengthened. So, now that actually basis of our survival and the basis of our sort of stable mind. Now, elder one, more compassionate person, generally, their mind more stable and because more inner strength. That comes from their attitude towards other more positive way. That brings inner, I mean, less fear. You can immediately reach out and make friendship. And that gain more self-confidence. That automatically reduces fear and sense of insecurity. Very clear. Basically, we are social animal. Each individual's survival based on I think from ancient time up to now, particularly now, because of global economy, environment issue, and some other issue, I think the world, six billion human beings, compelled live together peacefully, harmoniously. This is a question of our survival. Not one side victory, one side defeat, but the question of six billion human beings' survival. So now that's the new reality. So therefore, the compassionate attitude is even more necessary, more relevant to today's world.
just another human being out of six billion human being. One of the six million human beings. I believe individual's future much depends on the rest of the humanity, rest of the world. So world, humanity, happy, peaceful. I got maximum benefit. So according to reality, just self-centered attitude, forget or no concern about the rest of the humanity. That is unrealistic attitude. That's foolish attitude. So occasionally I use the word, we are selfish. It should be we are wise selfish rather than foolish selfish. So that means for selfish reason, pay more attention about others' well-being, you get maximum benefit. So sometimes you see people uh, have the, the people you see feeling or impression, the subject such as compassion, forgiveness, these things uh, consider as a religious matter, right? religious concept. As religious qualities? Oh. Then, uh, those people who have no interest about religion or not serious interest about religion, then they also is a forget is a these values. That's a mistake. Human compassion is a universal value. Even animals also appreciate our affection, our compassion. I think many of you may have as a pet, some dogs, or as a cats, or birds. So I think you can, I mean, you have experience more I mean, showing genuine affection with trust. They also respond accordingly. If you just feed, feeding without affection, uh, they know. Uh, the master, what kind of sort of master? <laughs> the, uh, dogs, uh, particularly the small dogs, young dogs or young cats, when we pick up and really showing uh, affection, then they are response licking. Sometimes young dogs. Uh, tongue and get some kind of salty, salty thing. Oh, very beautiful, really, very, very beautiful, like that. Uh, oh, cats, uh, what's it, tongue, quite rough, <laughs> isn't it? So even then, you see, they show, they respond to us, like, or sometimes, uh, with the pattern, you should call, uh, a cat also recite Om Mani Padme Hum. That means, you see, when we pay you see, affection and, and caress them, uh, uh, caress them, holding like them. that, you see, they say <laughs> like that. So these are, they also have the ability to respond to us affection and ability to show affection out of appreciation of, of our affection. So here, nothing to do with religion. These poor animals, no religious faith. So therefore, these are universal. Now most important, uh, latest scientific finding. Uh, I have I think since now more than uh, 20 years, you see, uh, originally out of my own curiosity about modern science. So since my childhood, I have some sort of curiosity uh, about cosmology or, or everything, or particles or flowers or these things. So 
the uh, I develop the keen interest about modern science and also technology. So therefore, out of my own curiosity, I start sort of some serious talk with scientists. Then eventually, uh, as a result of both sides found some useful exchange views from Buddhist perspective and modern scientific sort of perspective, right? And more discussion really brings mutual benefit. And we Buddhists uh, found very useful new ideas, new concept from modern science. And to the scientists, particularly in the field of psychology and uh, neuron science. Neuroscience. Uh, see, they found useful information from Buddhist sort of what is it, explanation. So, the many occasions, the scientists, and particularly uh, scientists in the field of medical science, I said they found more compassionate mind, uh, very good for sustain, or in some cases even increasing our immune system. Whereas constant fear, anger, hatred, literally they say, eating our immune system. So I think that should be the way we grown up and full of mother's affection. So, uh, naturally, since this proper development or proper growth of our body within the atmosphere of affection, uh, and mother's milk also symbol of affection, symbol of compassion, so our body grown up that way. So today's our body more one's own mental level, more compassion. This body very fit, very good. So after surgery, my own case, within uh, five days, all wounds uh, already kasuda. Recover so within one week, completely recover. So doctor, a little bit surprised. And one, the specialist, described me at that time as a young patient. Then I told him, I'm not a young patient. Uh, my age already uh, 73. Then that doctor told me, he know your age, but uh, your physical condition, something like age around 60. So that means I have nothing, but I think my, peace, my mind quite peaceful. So therefore, uh, through my own little experience, I can tell you with confidence the best way, carrying your health. Take more seriously about your emotional mental state. That's not, not in, sorry, expensive. Uh, go to hospital or equipment and clean everything very good. After one week, long list, cousin. long bill, long cousin, long bill, <laughs> long bill. <laughs> but utilize our own potential, bring more healthy body, no inexpensive, inexpensive, cheap, is it? In a way, priceless, is it? So 
let us try to build our body healthy way through peaceful mind. Some sense, isn't it? Then important is without disturbances, usually even animals, their mind quite peaceful, okay. But the problem, when we face problem, when we face disturbances, then our anger come, our aggressiveness nature become more sorry, alive. Then peace of mind destroy, peace of mind disappear. So we need special effort or special sort of technique. which is opportunity to develop destructive emotion. That is the right time, you see, to face a lot, not positive, not let what's it, that uh, negative, negative sort of, what's it, the emotion to deliberately try to sustain a positive attitude and so that we can uh, preserve our peace of mind. That's important. Now here we really need wisdom. Now here are two levels of compassion. One level by biological factor, which I mentioned. That's a biological factor. Uh, but that biological factor, emotion, simply for survival. So anger also suppose for our survival. Attachment also for survival. Attachment, those positive things, positive element to help our comfort we develop attachment. Attachment bring facilities together, closer to you. Something like this positive element which need for your survival, we own that. That mental sort of attitude is we call attachment. Then those, what's it, the harmful thing, Mentally, we equipped by biological factor some emotion to expel. Resistance. To resist. So that's biological factor. So this attachment, uh, ang anger, is very much based or very much oriented others' attitude. So therefore, logic, therefore, the compassion, which biological sort of factor, you see, that compassion uh, limited, you see, cannot extend towards our enemy. So disturbances created by our enemy. So when we are passing through disturbances, uh, a certain sort of inner strength in order to keep our peace of mind. Here now, uh, we need some effort. Uh, not, not sufficient, just biological factors, sort of the positive thing. Now, question of second level of compassion sense of caring or sense of concern for others' well-being. Now, firstly, oriented towards one's own friend, whom we receive some positive or help for our survival. And then, because oriented the attitude, so towards our enemy, you cannot develop compassion because that compassion very much oriented attitude. So your, our enemy's attitude is negative. 
So instead of compassion feeling, but the feeling of anger comes. Now that limited to compassion, biased to compassion, take as a seed further training, further sort of strengthening through reasons. Now shift focusing not on attitude but on the person. For example, we have some kind of love or whatever closeness feeling to oneself. Because I'm, because self love or oh, self love, yes, self love, yeah, self love, very. Not on the basis of one's own attitude, but rather self itself. Then reason, the self, by nature, do not want suffering and want happiness. Therefore, when passing through difficulties, then there is concern to overcome that difficulties and wishing more joyfulness. That self-love not oriented on attitude, but self itself. Now, that now shift towards other. Disregard their attitude, but being themselves, just like myself. By nature, they have desire to overcome suffering, to achieve happiness. It deserves. So therefore, on that basis, develop a sense of concern. That, now not oriented on attitude, but oriented to being itself. So that compassion now can extend towards our enemy. As far as their attitude is concerned, negative towards us. So we call enemy. Being. They are human beings. They also deserve achieve happiness, deserve to overcome suffering. So we develop that kind of concern. So that we need a little what's it, uh, reasons and a training. Familiarize that kind of perspective. We all look. Familiarize, then month by month, year by year, decade by decade, your mind more familiarized, that kind of attitude. So then even at the beginning, you feel difficult. You extend your compassion towards your enemy, troublemaker. But due to familiarization, eventually you can extend your compassion towards your enemy. It takes time, but very possible. Without religion, that can be possible. I found among the scientists, they don't care what nationality, what system, whether religious believer or non-believer, they don't care. But they have a sort of international feeling. No sort of Kazati distinction. Uh, no discrimination. Uh, no discrimination. No discrimination. So I think it's genuine religious people also is no discrimination. So similarly, the genuine compassion, unbiased compassion, compassion come from training, come, come from effort. Now that truly be a universal. That we can train. And as I mentioned before, according to today's reality, we really need that. Through training, through education, through awareness, I think we can cultivate that kind of attitude. So this is what I want.
So, the Jan's my now I do some connection with the value of compassion or power of compassion in turbulent times. In turbulent times. Uh, in turbulent times. Oh. So that's the. Uh, I think I myself, you see, uh, at the age 16, I lost my freedom and also take responsibility, temporal as well as spiritual, as Buddhist, Tibetan, Buddhist, Tibetan tradition since the last 400 years. The Lama institution is head of both temporal as well as spiritual. Then, my age, 24, I lost my own country. Now, 50 years passed. Recently, in San Francisco, uh, one organizer who give, what is it, free soap, free kitchen. Soup, soup kitchen. Uh, so they invited. So when I received that invitation, I, I very much happy you see, to go there. Uh, and I went there. Many of them introduced myself. Anyway, I I also homeless person. So we dined together. Oh, these poor people, really, no pretension, no hypocrisy, no artificial. Because they are difficult people, so they don't care about because of that, uh, about their sort of attitude. So very, very, very cordial. So they are also I remind. Uh, actually, I told that uh, that experience that day, uh, that lunch period, it reminds my early sort of experience. When I was in Plaza, at Nobulinga or Kodala, particularly Nobulinga, they, I always mixing with uh, those innocent people, sweeper, lay people, uneducated. They do not know how to polite. Where? How to be polite? Huh? Very innocent, very straightforward. I, and these people are actually the source of my information. What is going on uh, among the religious people, among the among the officials, including regent? If I when I ask the officials, then a little bit cautious. But these university the people, very straightforward. A lot of criticism, a lot of gossips. They always bring. So I spend with them. And having meal together, I had a very, very pleasant sort of experience. So I remind that. I was reminded of oh, that. It's mixing with those it's homeless people. So the point is, there I mentioned I also a kind of homeless person. So last 50 years, homeless people, homeless person. But there's a different saying. Uh, the place where you get and whomever you receive uh, affection, that's your parent. So that Tibetan concept liberated my mind. <laughs> so uh, last 50 years in India as a homeless person, but found very warm, home. And also, you see, a lot of friends, not only in India, but also in Europe. Now today here, Kasachuti. Hmm. Netherlands. Uh, Netherlands here. Yeah. I think over 10,000 people, you see, quite crowded here. You see, you not come here out of your anger, <laughs> but out of your closeness feeling. So, that is the basis of 
happy days, happy years, happy life. And when our mind more calm, more happy, happy mood, then our handling difficulties more easily. Otherwise, our basic mood disturb, then even a small problem handling difficult. Too much stress, too much anxiety, too much anger, difficult. So calm mind through that way, very, very helpful to solve, to handling our problem. Then another aspect, calm mind creates our ability to look reality objectively. Too much emotion, with too much emotion, we can't uh, study, we can't look objectively the thing. One my scientist, one American, unfortunately not Dutch, <laughs> one American scientist, I think his uh, age when I met in Stockholm, uh, I think 80, 84 years, very old, very experienced. Now, he told me, when we develop anger uh, towards someone, at that time, the person or the people, the object appears very negative. So actually, the 90% of that negativeness which appears is mental projection not reality. This is not a Buddhist explanation, this is a scientist explanation. So exactly same uh, some Buddhist literature is explaining. So therefore, too much attachment, too much sort of so impulse sensation. Uh, repulsion. Ah. Repulsion. Oh, what? Too much repulsion? Oh, I don't know that word. Hmm. <laughs> you see that? No. Actually, you see, uh, uh, the vision that you get of the person or the object is clouded. Hmm? You can't see the, the reality. Then, uh, no matter what you handle that problem or that, 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 that thing, Actually, your way of approach become unrealistic because you actually do not know the reality because too much emotion, the mental projection, much mental, mental projection. If something positive, too much exaggeration about positiveness. The negative, too much negativeness. So therefore, uh, any unrealistic approach, even harming to other, through unrealistic approach to achieve your goal. Whether positive or negative, our method should be realistic. Now, in order to carry realistic approach, we must have full picture of the reality. Full assessment of the reality. Full assessment of the reality. Uh, objectively. Uh, then, calm mind. Your mind, calm mind, uh, then the part of our mind which look Too much emotion, that part cannot function properly. With that, the way to investigate, we must utilize from various angles. From one dimension, you can't see the whole picture of the reality. We must look from three dimensions or four dimensions or six dimensions. 
and from various different angles, then you can see the reality more kaza. More wholly, more comprehensively. Or more kaza. More, more comprehensively. Or comprehensively. So, so the calm mind is very essential, objectively looking. This is not out of sort of indifferent, but fully engaged, fully alert, but deliberately your mind neutral, calm, and investigate. So compassionate mind create more calm mind. So you see both both fields really very useful. Uh, firstly, calm mind reduce hatred or these things, and uh, you can you can face much easier these problems or disturbances. And secondly, calm mind creates possibility to see reality more objectively. So therefore, education wonderful. But education with emotion, uh, limited effect. So education, awareness, with calm mind, much useful, much better. After September 11 event, I express many occasions, smart brain and modern technology guided by hatred, then such disasters happen. So these people, as far as their brain is concerned, very smart. How can carry such sort of unbelievable sort of action? And I think no doubt they prepare, if not years, but at least months they prepare in high secrecy. So just ordinary people, difficult to carry such, uh, such work. So very smart, very determined. But their smart mind, smart brain, guided by hatred. And determination also based on hatred. So, Education, smart brain, is human quality, good quality, but not balanced by honest or by compassion. Then another thing, compassionate mind automatically always follow or pursue truthfully, honestly. When you carry your work honestly, truthfully, you can, you can, you, you will be much prouder to open. You carry work, no matter how show nice, but in deep inside, some negative emotion, then you can't carry truthfully, honestly, transparently. So now modern economy, global crisis, one my Italian businessman once told me, as a sort of my inquiry, he mentioned this global economic crisis. One sort of causes of that uh, too much greed. That second, without knowing properly, but simply create some rumors or speculation and not open, hypocrisy, not transparent. So he mentioned these are some causes of this crisis. So look, even this economic crisis, some way, some, some way related with our uh, emotion. Right from the beginning, truthful, transparent, and saying truthfully to public, 
then when crisis happened, much less shock. Presented or something being well, then suddenly, you say something, I mean, some kind of some truth, you see, telling some truth, then much shock. So, this crisis, global social economic crisis, also related with our Kasota, uh, our mental attitude. So, therefore, individual viewpoint, individuals' mental peace or happiness, joyfulness even your life, your lifestyle, very simple, very contented, but full of compassion with all your members of family, very happy. I'm quite sure those people, those, I think, millionaire or billionaire, who day and night think about money, I think they got maximum disturbances due to this crisis. So those more simple person, of course, when their jobs is lost or something, then of course, much worry, automatically there. But basically, uh, besides money, who have very pleasant family, uh, full of love, full of compassion, I think much less disturbances. So sometimes I feel this unfortunate global economic crisis Maybe reminder to us there are other values also there. So please don't rely on everything on money. I think that kind of reminds, I think, to us. So therefore, you see, think, you see, this line, uh, you get, and there is no reason to be pessimistic. And one important, uh, if you judge 20th century's event, early part of 20th century, later part of 20th century, big change in the human mind. I think a few examples. In early part, the leaders and even people, I think, feel uh, finally, some violence or war uh, cannot avoid, unavoidable, unavoidable, uh, in order to solve some problem. But then later, they change. And I think practice, practical level also, I think many government now get a lesson, including the United States government. Of course, I love. Uh, President Bush, as a human being, very nice person. From my, from our first meeting. Now, for example, uh, when we sat down, uh, some cookies there. So then, I just express, oh, which cookie is better? I just express. Then President Bush. Uh, immediately said, oh, this is very good, this is very delicious. <laughs> so he, he acted like old friend. So immediately we developed very close sort of uh, feeling each other. So as a human being, a oh, very nice person. Uh, some cases, some leaders and politicians say, when we met, little, little sort of distance. And then the second meeting, a little closer, third meeting, fourth meeting, closer, closer, closer. But President Bush, right from the beginning, very close. So I always see, uh, tell him, when his name is mentioned, I always say, I love him. But it, I also told him, I love you, but some of your uh, decision, I have some reservation. <laughs> so I told him, very frankly. <laughs> so very nice, very nice person. So uh, some of his sort of policy, of course, the very sincere motivation. 
I'm quite sure. And also go bring democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan. But method using force. So unexpected problems as it happened. Therefore, in practical level also, uh, so, so, so therefore, uh, look before Iraq crisis. Millions of people opposing violence or war. In First World War, Second World War, I think you European, I think very much experienced uh, when concerned nations declare war, I think everybody proudly joined war effort. Since Vietnam War, that kind of thing no longer there. And Kosovo War happened. Many people opposed that. So that's healthy sign. The later part of the 20th century, uh, the desire for peace, completely fed up about violence, about bloodshed, very much strong. And then attitude towards ecology. Between early part, later part, big change. Then also idea of democracy, idea of what's it, uh, uh, human right or self-determination. One time I met the Queen Mother of England, then her age, uh, 96th birthday. So uh, when I had the audience, her, I just asked her, since you observed whole century, so the world become better or remain same or worse? Without hesitation, she told me better. Then she explained, when she was young, nobody talked about right of self-determination or human right. Now today, these things are universal value. She told me like that. So the, and then, uh, and I think the science and the spirituality. In the early part, science and, and the spirituality, simply two different uh, disciplines. Uh, disciplines, not much connection. Later part of the 20th century, uh, the mind, the subject side, also important. Now come closer, closer. So these are, I think, humanity becoming more mature as a result of painful experience. Then also, now for example, I think during war, when atomic tested, atomic bomb tested, I think considered people very much sort of happy, very much proud. Now everywhere, anti-nuclear weapon, very, very, very strong. Uh, then another example I want to share with you. Uh, in Germany, German people and Japanese people, uh, in Japan, actually, I asked some of my Japanese friends in public meeting, do you have some kind of negative feeling towards America? Because America dropped. Actu uh, dropped, dropped. Uh, actually dropped or used nuclear bomb on your people, two bombs. Because of that, and one time I visited Hiroshima and Nagasaki, both. Oh, the museum of that nuclear, what's it, destruction. Very, very painful. So, so I asked many occasions, some of my Japanese audience, they say no. I think that also, I think, one good sign. And then, 
in Germany, like now example when Obama uh, during the election, you see he visited Berlin. I think over 200,000 German uh, public just greeted him. No sign of some kind of negative feeling. So this also, I think, positive sign. We humanity. I think now you see the, uh, I think, sense of sort of closeness one another as a global citizen. I think that growing. So these are positive signs. So therefore, although the 21st century, beginning of 21st century, not very healthy, but overall, Berlin Wall gone, not, uh, not by force, but by popular movement. And then I think the important thing is the uh, early around 1917 and 18, the Bolshevik uh, start this uh, with believe the authoritarian centralized sort of institution can transform the society. But that failed within this within the century. So individual initiative, individual creativity is essential for development. So freedom is very, very important. So therefore, the former changed. Although some stress, some traces were, some traces of Cold War, <laughs> a little bit there, that's unfortunate. But otherwise, I think things basically, you see, much changed. So people struck with China. I think one wonderful change, that is today, uh, Communist Party or People's Republic of China without a communist ideology. It's quite wonderful, isn't it? Communist Party without a communist ideology. And the name of a socialist country, but without a socialism. <laughs> Just a capitalism. <laughs> so that's a big change, isn't it? <laughs> so therefore, you see, things are changing. So judging all these factor, uh, and also religious pluralism, also growing in the faith service. Now, everywhere I, I go, I have opportunity to interfaith. And very sincere sort of spiritual brother, sisters, sort of, because of the spirit there. So these are, I think, a very, very positive sort of the development. So therefore, I think we here, including myself, I think we should look forward with full of optimism rather than do do certain sort of sad things here and there and we demoralize and pessimistic attitude should not do that. Let us look forward and with full confidence and with compassionate, compassionate mind. That's, I think, very, very important. So, uh, that is about my talk about power of compassion in turbulence world. <laughs> so, some relevant? Okay. <laughs> so, now some questions. Yes, read the question. What does Your Holiness think the Western society can do to stop increasing violence? Kasa. Violence might have been Western society. Kawa, kawa. What do you mean? How can the Western society? What can the Western society do to stop increasing violence? You mean within the society or on the world? I think, I think it's more or less the same. 
in, uh, in, the, in the level, worldwide, global level, in order to reduce violence, then firstly, your own society uh, must build, must promote non-violent idea and the spirit of dialogue uh, with awareness and based on compassion. And that also firstly built in, in family. And in order to create compassionate family, in the, ultimately depend on individual. So sometimes we, feel, we get the feeling world peace uh, too big. One individual, how can make a contribution? But then, we, if we think actually how to start practical way, the first individual try to create inner peace. Then that experience brought in your family, create more peaceful family. Then one family, ten family, hundred family, thousand family, that way create peaceful society, peaceful community. So some my friends, I think in Mexico, once she told me they create some kind of uh, zone of peace within you see their uh, community in certain sort of area, the few family, uh, they agree in that area, now zone of peace, no more any quarrel. Uh, if you really want quarrel, then you should go outside from that community. So that kind of a practice. Also, I think possible in Amsterdam, I think somewhere, uh, 100 family create a uh, zone of ahimsa. So within that, to intentionally avoid harsh word or physical action and remain honestly, truthfully, transparently. If you cannot do these things, then uh, find, try to find new, new area. <laughs> go, go there. <laughs> I think such practices you can do. And then also, in school, although uh, I think quite a number of people really, you see, carrying some research work, uh, in education sort of uh, curriculum, some lesson of nonviolence uh, and compassion, these things, moral ethics, secular way, secular basis. Uh, but, uh, but I think the, uh, it is wrong just to wait. I think try to implement. And I think there must be some, uh, I think about the school teachers, and also I think the families, uh, your children, you see, caring, so what's the getting education. So I think you both have the responsibility to teach our children uh, value of compassion, value of sort of the, uh, the non-violence, these things. So, so I think uh, I always, you see, have the strong feeling, please, those parents, please provide maximum love and compassion towards your children. And then also teachers, when you carry teaching in class, not only just, uh, not, not, like, not acting like a messenger, uh, so to explain. Just merely passing on the information. Uh, uh, just merely passing on the information. Yes, passing information. Not that way, but truly, you should teach with full care. There are the rest of their life depend uh, their education. So you show, you teach with the sense of responsibility whole rest of the life of the student. Then student really develop love, trust towards teacher. 
So those lessons from respected, loved teacher, that lesson really go deep in their mind. So I think, uh, so that way, try to build healthy society. So through that way, then there is possibility of new world, more compassionate world. So I think European people, I notice, you see, you, you have, I think, some kind of the more what's it, the ability of curiosity, ability to learn, ability to test than other, so I think Asians and uh, I think seems, I think less. So that's not necessarily, I think, from, from good thing, but you, even Dutch, Netherlands, the small land, one time you acting like, I mean, you as an imperialist for Dutch colony in many parts of the Asia. So you've done, I think, maximum exploitation on Asia, on us. <laughs> so like many, many European countries, I think you really uh, tested, uh, experimented uh, awful things also. So therefore, you really become mature. So the idea of democracy, rule of law, equality, and of freedom, because of the individual freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of, sort of belief, freedom of press, all these is come from the West. So now, you should take new initiative, try to build compassionate society out of awareness. Next question. I want to lead a spiritual life, but I am a householder. Does His Holiness have advice for me? Order. Uh, spiritual practice, there are various levels. Uh, and in some cases, of course, whole or so they give up of the worldly life and the hermit uh, life, hermited way. Hermitage. And commit to a hermit life. Uh -huh. That also is one way. But that, uh, in a way, not very effective. I think better remain householder, remain in the society, and you yourself transform, change. Then uh, other people also is bring together, then more common effort to change the society, to change better society, more healthier society, more compassionate society. That may be, I think, better. You yourself enjoy. occasion, some nightclub, go nightclub and some other sort of music or so these things, enjoy. Meantime, you see, always keep in your mind the, the responsibility to build happy society, compassionate society. I think that is maybe better service to the society, service of the humanity, then just one single person remain in a remote place and suppose some meditation without much progress. <laughs> so therefore, I think practical level may be better. Oh, this reminds the first Dalai Lama. He, after his study, uh, become scholar, then he spent in remote area the meditation. I think he spent, I think, a few years, some years. And then during that period, he got some visions, actual sort of seeing 
like Goddess Tara or these things. Then he chose, instead of spending her midway, uh, just one simple person's meditation, he give up that and come to the society and decide build Toshilumbu Monastery, the Penjil, later Penjilamas Monastery, Toshilumbu. And there he carried very busy work, uh, uh, about construction. He also supervised the way constructing the monastery. for that construction. And also, as a great sort of scholar, he preached, he also take lessons. Right. He also gave lessons? Uh, uh, give lessons to students. And plus, I think, his own daily meditation or practice, these things. So then later, he expressed, if I spent that hermit life continuously, my spiritual development uh, will achieve. I sacrifice that in order to serve the society. I sacrifice that, come to here, build this monastery in order to uh, benefit for larger community. I think this is one ex good example, isn't it? So I also, you see, God, uh, sort of was it a inspiration from that story. Of course, whether I can really achieve the high spiritual experience or not, that I doubt. Uh, but at least see, I have, if I spend is it more, let's say the hermit way, I think uh, comparatively I have deeper experience. But then, in the terms of useful to other people, usefulness to other people. Uh, I think this, this kind of life may be better, isn't it? So therefore, you know, so, so therefore, therefore, as my suggestion, of course, entirely up to you, uh, but my suggestion may be better remain part of the society, and early morning, uh, uh, you know, my daily life starts 3.30. That may be too early to you. So I think 5.30, wake up, and some meditation. Then, uh, life, late, late night, that I think not much meaning. Better to go sleep earlier. One time in Berlin, uh, the room, the, the room of the hotel where I stay, I live, just front, the opposite. Some, you see, modern music and some dance like that. So, uh, evening, no, the, what was that? The evening, late evening, about uh, seven, eight, uh, eight o'clock, right? Uh, I about to go to sleep. They, uh, I, I hear, it's like that, the music. Then midnight, I wake up and went to the toilet. Uh, still going on. Then next morning, uh, about four, I get up. Still going on. Then about, you see, about the sun, sun rays, right? Sunrise. Sunrise. Then they close. So that's, I think, too much. Too much. I think I'm quite sure. I think the rest of the day, I think they must feel sleep. Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy. So, uh,
Det lader der. Ja, ja. Ja, 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 ja. Og jo, pladsen. Ja, ja, ja. Kom, ja, kom, ja. Kom, ja. So like that, no. So you see, your life style, uh, I think you should, so that should be some 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 kind of timetable. Then is some some period, some meditation, some reading, uh, shaping your mind. Uh, my my own sort of daily life. In early morning, as soon as I wake up, I think. Uh, think the shape of my mind about altruism, these things, so, and also make some kind of uh, pledge or determination. The rest of the day, uh, I should act according to this. I was today, according to these ideals. Hmm? So that really helpful. The whole rest of life, some. Influence or some impact. Some impact remains. Oh, uh, from the early morning sort of what's the day? motivation. Cultivation of the motivation. Oh, uh, so that you can do, isn't it? So that's my view. Next question. What can we do to make the world better for women? How can we stop domestic violence and honor killings? Women. Hmm. Now here. Domestic violence. Huh? Generally, generally, uh, I now since some time back, I'm telling in the public in America and also uh, in France and many places. history in early period. Yesterday also I mentioned so no idea of leadership. Simply uh, just I think truly classless society. And then eventually leadership, concept of leadership come due to some crimes like that. So the leadership then since there is no education so the uh, the quality of leadership is physical strength. So that's the male dominant start. Then eventually education becomes important in the society. So male and female becoming more equal, generally. Now today, we are 21st century. Besides education, we really need special effort for promotion of compassion. For that field, female have more important role, as I mentioned before. Uh, so, physically, biologically, according to scientists, female, physical, more sensitive, about others' pain. The scientists say. And therefore, the women usually more potential of compassion, a sense of sort of sensitivity, right? sensitivity about others' pain. Scientists, one occasion you see mentioned one male, one female, uh, and some, someone passing through very painful experience, then response from the female more stronger. Response. So therefore, now time or such, uh, we need special effort for promotion of compassion. Now women's role more important. So take more active role in the society. And through that way, your own family level also, you see, can be 
That's very complicated now, very complicated. Uh, since many years, uh, you know, when America really discuss, they will say, uh, permanent was the most favored nation most status. Most favored nation hmm? status. When that serious discussion is uh, having there, uh, I express China, most populated nation. Therefore, the China must bring into the mainstream of world community. Uh, it is not advisable. Actually, it's China. China must bring into the mainstream of world community. Uh, so, in the economy field, the China, the China themselves is the one to join the world community. Most welcome. Uh, but at the same time, the world community have more China bring to the world stream of democracy, openness. That's very, very important. So those people, those companies who carry some investment, investment. I think they should keep in their mind the long-term sort of benefit, both China, Chinese people, as well as world. Uh, I think more open society, more transparent society uh, is everybody's interest. Close society, unpredictable with nuclear weapon and with the idea power come from barrel of gun. Disregard truth. Uh, that's not everybody's interest. Even Chinese people also is the one to change. Therefore, just you see, just you see, look, economy matter only not other implication. That's not wise. You see? Sincerely, without losing principle. That's, I think, important. Next question. What's that? Is it important to forgive everyone for their bad deeds? And how can one have compassion for people who do bad things to other people or animals? Oh, I think forgiveness does not mean we accept others' wrong doing. Forgiveness not keep ill feeling towards the people or person who carry unjust activities. 
So as far as the unjust action is concerned, we have to take appropriate countermeasure in order to stop that unjust also, dream. So here, more sort of appropriate countermeasure, including tough measure, without anger, but rather sense of concern about their long-term future. So this morning I mentioned anger, one type of anger motivated by compassion. That kind of anger is positive, I mentioned this morning. So that means as far as there was a nasty action is concerned, we need some kind of little harsh mental attitude and try to stop that. But deep, deep level, out of concern, they also send a being, they also human being. Uh, out of their ignorance, out of their emotion, they are doing these wrong things. So we have the responsibility to stop that. This, this case, without negative feeling, that means forgiveness. So it is not contradictory. Practice of forgiveness, just not forget. Remember, they are wrongdoing and take appropriate measure. Uh, but without negative feeling because of that wrongdoing. That's, I think, the real meaning of forgiveness. Hmm. Right. The next question is, climate change is a pressing issue that knows no boundaries. It is affecting all of us, even more so in your country, Tibet. Yes. What can we all do to raise awareness and make a difference before it is too late? So the uh, taking care of environment, I think it should become part of our daily life uh, through education, through awareness. So I think, uh, oh, now yawning. She's having a Kazakh. Oh, they, uh, they like uh, violence. When we saw in television bleeding, dying, like that, we immediately feel oh, how bad. So the feeling of peace or nonviolence can develop easily. Then environment issue. Without noticing, uh, it, because through some kind of invisibly getting worse and worse and worse. Once the real effect becomes so serious and become effect our eyes or children's breathing or lung, things like that, then maybe too late. So therefore, education reminds people the environment issue is not a question of one individual survival, but entire six million human beings, entire planet itself. So taking care of environment should, should become part of our daily life. Power and water, all these things, then there's some kind of today, self-discipline. Yes, I think necessary. My own case, of course, a little bit sort of silly sort of contribution. Whenever I live in a hotel room or in Dharamsala also, I always put off light. Uh, then 
bath. I never use kasah tap. I never use the bath tap. Oh, only shower. Of course, the shower, one morning, one evening. <laughs> That's my luxury. <laughs> but you see, only shower. Uh, so that also I, I consider a little contribution for preserve water. So like that. So you see, it now, of course, I myself also, only after learning from specialists, I develop sense of concern. When we were in Tibet, no, no idea about the environment issue. Uh, so through awareness, through learning, I developed this kind of sense of responsibility. So I think people, public, uh, I think through education. So media people have, I think, a very, very special role and very important sort of what's today. Uh, responsibility. We have received a request from someone which says, can we please say all together, like some kind of praying under the leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the mantra of the Buddha of Compassion, O Mani Padme Hum, to feel the strength of so many people here. I think, no, no, wait, wait, wait. I think that not very relevant. Uh, I think just we spend, say, I think, three minutes silent meditation. Mm. Just to meditate or think about compassion uh, and make it or develop some kind of determination the rest of my life. Or oh, one of my friend in Nepal, one occasion he made sort of pledge the rest of his life uh, he will control his anger. Well, such things are really much station of mantra. So you know, usually I make a joke. The Om Mani Padme Hum, this mantra. So sometimes when we fasting, when we say quickly, quickly, then Om Mani, Om Mani, Om Mani, Mani. So that that sounds looks like money, 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 like that. <laughs> so you see, I think that's quite honest. In our mind, <laughs> thinking only money. So verbally also say money, 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 that. <laughs> I think that's quite honest. <laughs> so is it not much, I think, important. Now important, let us meditate or think or cultivate compassion and if possible, some kind of place, oneself. Now on, I will reduce my anger, uh, my quarrel with my cause of panda. Uh, I will uh, take, I will provide maximum compassion towards my children, towards my husband, my wife, and towards our own uh, parent or grandparent. It is very, very, so therefore, that kind of sort of kasoda, please, by oneself. So therefore, uh, that I think useful. So meditation. Then those religious people, those people who recite some mantra, or some God's name, some Allah name, then recite that. So, let us meditate uh, three minutes. We'll start.
Thank you. Good afternoon, Tashtile. Before I would have the honor to thank His Holiness, I have a practical request to all the volunteers I requested to come down and stand in lines behind the curtain. Thank you. Your Holiness, on behalf of the organization that made this a unique visit to the Netherlands, on behalf of hundreds of volunteers, and on behalf of all of us here, I would like to thank you for taking time in your busy schedule to be with us today. We are all fortunate to be given the opportunity to listen and learn from you today. Your steadfast commitment to nonviolence as you seek peaceful future, not only for your own people, but also for the world at large, inspires all of us at these turbulent times. I also want to recognize and thank those of you here today and thousands and thousands of Netherlanders who have so generously given your time, your energy, money, hope, and support to His Holiness Dalai Lama and the people of Tibet at a very, very critical time. I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. The world is filled with much goodness and compassion, optimism and hope. But there's also uncertainty, conflict and hate. Your Holiness has said, I quote, we must recognize that the suffering of one person or one nation is the suffering of humanity. That the happiness of one person and nation is the happiness of humanity, unquote. Yet we cannot deny that placing principles of compassion, tolerance, and nonviolence at the heart of world affairs faces many, many challenges. Our leaders are compassion and tolerance. And I believe that in most circumstances, they genuinely wish to see long-standing conflicts resolved through dialogue and compromise. Sadly, though, often, when the going is at its toughest, it is precisely these principles that become compromised. As a Tibetan living in the Netherlands, I have been deeply saddened that the Dutch, gov that the Dutch government has been so unwilling to fully recognize the importance of your role, your holiness, in the non-violent struggle of Tibetan people. As a Tibetan, as a Tibetan, it is painful that despite the tragedy that is being played out inside Tibet, even at this moment, the Dutch government has to a great extent looked the other way. But as an individual, it also concerns me that some leaders like the vision to see that a successful outcome for the Tibetan non-violent struggle, if both we and the Chinese leadership can reach a compromise, could be the first act of giant step forward in the development of rights and freedoms for 1.3 billion people in China. Today is the 4th of June. It is 20 years today 
since the violent end to student demonstrations on Tiananmen Square in Beijing in 1989. Yes, a failure in Europe to challenge the Chinese leadership on sensitive issues is disheartening for Tibetans, but we should remember that it is also disheartening for our brave Chinese brothers and sisters who risk so much to build a more just China. Of course, as a Buddhist, I realize everything is impermanent. Governments come, governments go, both here and in China. Your Holiness, you recently said in an interview with the Church Television that history cannot be changed, but the future is a question of decisions and choices made. So I would like to thank Your Holiness once again for the teachings here today and this great public talk, and remind you, my dear friends in the audience, that it is our responsibility to ensure, even in turbulent times, and even when they may be a short-term course, that we maintain those key human principles of compassion, tolerance, and respect for the dignity of our fellow men and women. And I believe that these entire humanity much better in the long run. I once again thank you very much for your support in Holland that Tibet and Tibetan people has been enjoying all these years. And I would like to thank your holiness. Thank you so very much for having you here. It's been a great inspiration. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, and on request of His Holiness, I would like to give you a brief overview of the financial and organizational aspects of this visit. First of all, this visit has been organized by the Foundation Visit His Holiness Dalai Lama, a not-for-profit organization. All members of the organizing committee, as well as the helpers and volunteers, have been working without any form of payment. We've had only one exception, a paid part-time secretarial support, whom we incidentally overworked many more hours than she was compensated for. Let me express also my gratitude to all of the organizers, the volunteers, and of course the translators, who insisted for so many hours to face the challenges of this great visit. Can I ask the translators to come down to the stage later on to offer a kata to his holiness? Secondly, our aim has to be to minimize cost and ask for sponsorship in all of the cases where we have had to depend on professional partners. I would specifically like to mention the support and sponsorship of the RAI and ACS, our technical partner, as well as BKB, the public relations company that had worked very hard on the PR side of this visit without any compensation. Thirdly, we have been overwhelmed by the enormous public interest and number of tickets sold. Particularly this morning, for the Buddhist teaching, we are extremely pleased to have received almost double the amount of visitors we expected. Also, the amount of sponsor tickets sold far exceeded our expectations. As a result, the proceeds of this visit, which had been budgeted at zero, amount to 250,000 euros. This sum will be given to charity, as by His Holiness advice. This is an additional unexpected, very positive outcome of this visit, for which we are very grateful 
to all of you who have participated in this visit as well. Thank you very much. May I now also invite the translator on translators on stage to briefly offer a kata to His Holiness before he leaves. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask you to stay for just a few more minutes for some extra information. His Holiness will visit the auditorium briefly so that also there the people will see him live. Secondly, uh, can I remind you to switch off your headphone and give it back at the uh, entrance when you are going home right now. And please do not forget your personal belongings. Thirdly, there is a lost and found station at the information desk for any belongings you're still missing. 
Also, I would like you to remind you that there is a lecture of Sojo Rinpoche after this, where we would love to see you again. And this will play, take place from 5.30 this afternoon. Finally, with thanks to the Buddhist broadcasting organizations who insisted in making this possible, we are happy to offer you a copy of the DVD, The Dalai Lama, 50 years after the fall of Tibet.